Hi, Pat Love back with the last video with Pat's Two Cents. God's Word followed by, well, you know. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 1, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Hmm. I do rebuke. Yeah. Well, listen. Have you ever seen some of those TV programs? That was the first thing popped in my head when I read that. Where they would have this guy, supposed to be a medium, and they are supposedly conjuring up your recent love, loved one who had just passed away. And they sit there and talk to this entity and the entity uses them to give you messages. Now, one of the reasons it's so believable is because we go through this life with, how can I say this? In the same way that a human body carries parasites within and without, that's too microscopic to see, is the same way that we carry, uh, let's say they come along for the ride uninvited, familiar spirits. Now these are the last days, these are the end times. So. Don't be surprised if you start seeing more manifestation of the supernatural. And the reason why it's more dangerous now is when they talk about doctrines of devils and seducing spirits, spirits know how to capture your imagination. They know how to hypnotize. They know how to lure you and draw you and 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 um how can i say entice you it's called witchcraft manipulation so to speak and what ends up happening is when you're talking through to this medium to talk to this so-called loved one who has passed on you're dealing with familiar spirits who already know who the loved one was and knows all about him or her. And they imitate, they Im impersonate. <clears throat> and because you're so filled with emotion, you're so driven by feelings and by your loss, your discerning abilities or capabilities diminish. You end up going for the okie doke. I'm not trying to put down your loved one. What I'm saying is your loved one is not the one talking to you. When you communicate with mediums so that you can communicate with the dead which is against God's ways you literally open up a legal door for demons to come and go and mess with your life at will you give them the legal right you know what that's like it's like allowing I'm trying to make I, I'm always trying to make examples so you can really get what I'm saying the gravity of it if you have an abusive partner and you call the police because you have broken up with that partner they moved out and one night they break into your house you call the cops because you're afraid they're gonna hurt you and number two, they shouldn't be there because they don't live there. What's the first thing the police is going to ask? Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything in this house that belongs to him or her? Because if there is, the police can't arrest them. I had a friend who was instructed by our pastor to get rid of everything that belonged. Now I'm making a point, so stick with me now. Get rid of everything that belonged, even if it was just a razor, get rid of it. Throw it away if you have to, but get rid of it. Mail it to him, COD, but get rid of it. He broke into her house. He was going to beat her once again. She was able to call the police and the pastor. The pastor came and the police were there. And because the guy had an audience, he didn't go forward with his plan but he was still in the house. As the pastor had instructed her, because she listened, when the police came, guess what the first question was that they asked her? Is there anything in this house that belongs to him? She said boldly, no. They said, even more boldly, arrest him and book him. So, when you have the legal right to get rid of a demon, you have the authority, the name of Jesus, all of that. But when you have toyed with the occult, you have toyed with witchcraft, mediums, and all of that, communicating with the dead, and you have invited them into your domain, it's way harder to get rid of them. Much harder. Then when your children start to have little invisible friends, you think it's imagination, but you have opened a door. And they can come in and manipulate and maneuver any way they want, with whom they want. So you have to be careful not to allow the doors to be open for any reason. No Ouija boards, no calling, consulting with, what do you call those guys? Come on, psychics. Paying money for psychics. You can't play with that stuff. Everything God does, Satan tries to emulate. And you go for the okie doke because you're seeing power. You're seeing the supernatural. Woo, it's fascinating. That's why movies like Harry Potter and some of these other movies, you notice they're getting more and more demonic and there's more and more witchcraft and more about witches and white magic and black magic. and It's fascinating. All of that is fascinating. It's fascinating to everybody. But those of us who know Christ, who have Christ in our hearts and are led by the Holy Spirit, have been warned by God in too many ways. And even though the fascination is there, we refuse to give it an audience. We refuse to engage because we don't want doors to the demonic opened up in our lives. Rightfully so, because we've given it legal right. We don't want that. But some of you are doing this ignorantly. And you don't realize that it doesn't stop there. They draw you in, they lure you in, because they're seducing you. I'm not talking sexual seduction. Seduction happens in many ways. They're seducing you. And while you're going, ah, ah, oh, 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 this is great fun. Oh, we're going to have fun. Oh, goody, 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 goody. They're saying, that's right, fool. Come on. I got something for you. <laughs> you're going to like it, too. But you don't see the scorpion stinger in the back. You don't see the venomous fang 
that they're hiding under their lip, under their smile. You don't see the the the, the killer, the the poisonous, uh, murderous intention. You don't see that because it's coming to you in in shapes and forms they know you like, so that you will go for the okie doke. And I'm telling you, if you're not careful, you can be taken so far down the road. You wouldn't know God if he walked up and laid hands on you. Because you're so enticed by the sparkle and the beauty of this hidden evil. You've got to be careful. You've got to guard your heart, mind, body, soul, spirit. You've got to guard your ear gate, your eye gate. Every gate there is for them to enter. You've got to guard that. It's, it's, it's like a, a, a woman that wants to, to date a married man. It always ends up jacked. It always ends up worse than it started out. That's the way it is with Satan. He starts you out sweet, nice. Yeah, you like it. And that's what you're supposed to do is like it until he gets his hook into you. Then when you're ready to stop playing the game, he's got a grip on you and you can't get loose. And you're like, well, well, wait a minute, I'm, I don't want to play anymore. And Satan said, oh, no, don't no, go like that. You're mine. I own you, fool. Then he starts to show the ugly side because then he gets a charge out of tormenting your life. Okay, I'm going to stop. I tried to warn you. Mm -hmm. Everything that glitters is not gold from heaven, baby.